This week, the initiative structures are cleared out of multiple regions. Conflicts continue in Fethabolis. The Bastion is pushed out of Esoteria. The Imperium refines its strategy to protect 3-D MQT. And everyone acknowledges the effectiveness of Pando's bomber squads. Oh, and also there is a prize draw for two Procura Scope Syndication skins. Hello, pod people. I'm Frost, and this is your weekly EVE Online War Update. Welcome back. So before we jump into the news, uh, the first thing I need to do is my prize draw winners for previous weeks. So I need to move over a little bit to the side here because I need to make room for everybody. Uh, I have three winners to announce. Uh, the first one is Telos Johnson, uh, who won the Malice skin all the way back from the 3rd of May episode. Uh, and then I have two winners from last week. Uh, that is Rabuti Ventress and Relic Sadab. I thought it was going to be a Triglavian invasion there, but uh, Relic saved the day. Uh, and uh, both of those guys have won a Pure skin, and those are the really rare Scope Syndication skins. Uh, I have two more to give away on this show, and I will talk about that a little bit later in the show. And also, Death Rat, uh, you are the last person that still has a skin outstanding. This is your last call. Uh, please contact me via Discord. Uh, link is in the description uh, to claim your prize. All right, so let's jump, jump on to things. So, as always, up into my box. And as you can see, we are still in dark mode. Uh, from the comments in the last week's episode, uh, Dark Mode is clearly the favourite, and so we will continue with that. Uh, I have my pen at the ready. Uh, let me make sure I turn it on. As usual, we will do uh, what we always do, and that is uh, just highlight the areas we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about Fountain, Delve, Aquarius, uh, Catch. We're going to go up to Curse, uh, Great Wildlands, Ethereum Reach. We're going to mention the Forge, just going to mention it quickly. We're going to go back down, and we're going to include Immensia, Tenerifis, as usual, we're going to miss out a mist. Uh, for the bolus, a Soteria, we're going to miss out those two, and there we go. All right, so there we go. So we've got a kind of nice little sort of U-shape there going on of all the areas we're going to cover. So let's start at the beginning. Uh, first thing up is the initiative. So if you remember, the initiative are uh, in the forge, or they've deployed over to the forge. Uh, they are also deployed in Delve, and they were previously deployed in Catch and Cuts in this area here. And what's been happening is essentially uh, on the Great Wildlands as well. Let's forget the Great Wildlands, let's just extend that out. Okay, there we go. And what's been happening in the last week is uh, Panfam specifically, uh, with a bit of help uh, from uh, Fire as well, have been kind of clearing out a lot of initiative structures. So uh, in fact, what we have is if we go into uh, Great Wildlands, uh, we had uh, th three Fortizars uh, destroyed that belong to the initiative. There's one in N-D, there was one in uh, NK-7XO, and there was one here in 168-68. So these were primarily, I would imagine, sort of staging stroke uh, uh, travel, um, uh, sorry, mind blank, Fortizars. So enabling them to move up from Curse and then to move over into Low Sec or over into the Forge. So it allowed them to kind of move uh, materials through and uh, ships, etc. And those have been cleared out by um, Panfam, and as I said, Fire as well. Uh, there's also been one in Curse um, that's been destroyed, and that was kind of an important one as well. That was in Oshit, or O-S-H-T-A, uh, if we're to use its proper name right there. And also there is one last, sorry, my chair is squeaking really badly against the desk. All right, um, there is also another Fortizar in here in GTAC OQ86. That is still being reinforced. Uh, the initiative did show up for that uh, in its armor timer. Uh, but they just kind of sort of just flew around just sniping uh, at every opportunity they could get at uh, potential people. There wasn't really a chance for them to uh, save the armor timer. They were just trying to get a few kills along the way. Uh, but we would expect that structure to uh, to be taken out this week, uh, judging by the numbers that Panfan and Fire Coalition are bringing to these. So uh, what this is basically doing is just removing structures. There are also some structures in catch, uh, but I will come on to those when we actually get to catch. So... Um, that pretty much covers kind of all the north element that I needed to do. Oh, the last thing as well is that uh, there was a jump bridge in Ethereum Reach uh, that was jump destroyed by the initiative, and that is the one in LLXQ 2-T, uh, which is kind of an important one, I think, if you remember correctly. It jumps over to the Calavello Expanse, uh, which is where Horde have a staging system. Now, that was hit originally two weeks ago. It was destroyed two weeks ago. It's been destroyed again and obviously then gets replaced. And the main point of the initiative being up here uh, isn't necessarily to destroy structures, but it's to 
just create timers and, and cause um, pandemic hold and pan fam in general to have to come up and kind of deal with these issues as and when they arise, just pulling people away from the front in Delft. All right, so uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to jump down to uh, Tenerife. So let's jump into Tenerife. So Tenerife has been a strange one, as you know recently. Uh, first up uh, that I noticed is XIX have taken another constellation. Now, apparently, from what I heard from XIX, a particular corp within XIX wanted to settle down there, and they said, why not, and let them go and do it. Uh, they are kind of far away. You know, I've talked about this before, that there's, uh, I think the aim is to eventually put a jump gate between these two systems, hence why GZ6 is important. That will then hopefully then allow them to get a little bit more projection into this area. Uh, but the thing that's of note, and I mentioned this last week, was the TCUs. So, uh, Dreadbomb have been really busy. They've been taking loads of TCUs now. So you can see they've got all of these. Now I kind of sort of put some feelers out and it looks like they may be looking to make this into a renting system and become renters. I can't confirm this. This is just kind of stuff that I heard, but it kind of makes sense as to why you would take TCUs other than for use as a capital system. So it's just to show that, yes, these are ours and we are in a position where we can rent these out to you. Uh, also, literally triggered have appeared here, uh, and they've also got an iHub, uh, sorry, TCU down in the bottom corner down here. So you can see literally triggered are here. Uh, I believe they also have the iHub uh, in BB. Uh, let me turn that off and go to iHubs. Yeah, we go. So there you go. So they've got the uh, the iHub in BB. So don't know much about literally triggered. Uh, I just know that for their logo, they have a really cool panda, like basically picking stuff out of a red panda to be precise, a red panda picking his teeth with a very sharp knife. Uh, in fact, I can just probably bring it up right now. There we go, uh, literally triggered. There we go, so there's, there's our panda at the top there. Uh, they're a decent size uh, alliance as well. I think they're close on a thousand uh, tunes. There we go, 946. Uh, and so, um, yeah, they are now showing up there. Now, the thing as well, let me go back to literally triggered very quickly because the other thing I noticed is you can see they kind of got like sovereignty all over the place. They're in Geminate, Peregrine Falls, Tenerife, and Tribute. So uh, if someone from Literally Triggered wants to get in touch with me, I would be really interested to know a little bit more about the Alliance and also um, kind of why you kind of got all this sob all over the place. It's kind of quite intriguing. All right, so that's pretty much it for Tenerife. Uh, what we're gonna do now, uh, we're gonna mention um, Immensia. There isn't really much to mention. Uh, there's just a new Alliance that has appeared here. It's a very, very small Alliance. So it's literally got 38 characters. Um, it's called uh, Lollipop Monopoly. Uh, they've taken a bit of Sov. I think um, uh, Deepwater Hooligans have taken an extra system. And that's pretty much it. But otherwise, Immensia has been extremely sort of kind of stable. So uh, Impasse as well, there's no news. As you know, that's kind of Red Menace Coalition are Impasse. There you go. You can see it's all as it has been for the last few weeks. And then that brings us on to Fethabolis. Now, uh, let me just uh, scroll down a little bit my notes here. All right, so with Fethabolis, uh, as you know, uh, IGC have been targeted by both Fire Coalition and by Army of Mango. Army of Mango have been focusing more on SOV and uh, Fire Coalition have been focusing more on structures. Now, um, first of all, you can see, uh, obviously, these areas up here uh, have been targeted. Now, what's interesting was that this was originally one RIT-A7, was originally held by XIX, and they've actually lost that. Uh, they've actually got this, still got the one with the Keepstar in, that's the IGC Keepstar in there, but they've actually lost RIT-A7. But as you can see, stuff is still getting reinforced, but it does look like IGC, that's NVIDIA Gloria comes, uh, who have kind of aligned themselves with the Imperium, uh, hence why they're being attacked by Army of Mango and Fire Coalition. And uh, you can see that in BJD uh, right here, that uh, they, you know, they are fighting back and fighting over their SOV. But they have been losing quite a lot of structures. Uh, in fact, they lost uh, four Fortisars this week, one Asbel and two Tataras. And I actually said they hadn't lost anything last week. I corrected it in the comments, uh, but they did actually lose last week one Satya, one Asbel and two Tataras as well. So Fire Coalition have been really busy uh, dismantling structures that belong to IGC. Uh, other piece of news, uh, oh yeah, the other thing as well was that an Asbel did do a big drop uh, so let's look at this Asbel. So this Asbel, as you can see, was uh, stripped of all its fittings um, uh, prior to, to its death. And uh, you can see that it's basically Legion of Death and uh, Unreal Alliance, Valkyrie, Patriot, so that's Fire Coalition, who did the damage. But what it did do is it dropped a whole bunch of stuff. Now, I can't say 
specifically what dropped. I just know that a lot of stuff dropped out of this, uh, this Asbel and uh, obviously it's all been looted by Fire Coalition. Now I don't actually have details so I can't prove what was actually in there but there was a lot of stuff apparently including capital pass and stuff like that. So uh, yeah, it's a good result for Fire Coalition there. All right, so uh, jumping back to uh, Featherbolis, we can talk about Evictus quickly. So Evictus are starting to get harassed now in Featherbolis. Now the first thing is, is that you can see that right here in YHP 2-D, uh, this system's been reinforced. It's happened a couple of times now. Uh, but more importantly, a, um, what was it? It was a Tatara uh, was destroyed in HYPL-V. Now, I actually have the kill mail for this because what's interesting with this is that it's the Bastion uh, dropped, in fact, let me bring it up, here we go. They dropped two uh, supers uh, onto the structure and it wasn't defended by the Evictors. So if the Evictors did try to defend it, they weren't able to. Uh, so it was primarily the Bastion, but obviously Fast Kick were involved as well. And in fact, here we go, you can see there's a couple of ships from fast kick right there. Now that is relevant because uh, if we go back to our universe map, let me just make sure that I've got, there we go. Uh, in order to reach HYP, you have to jump from one of these four systems. These are the only four systems outside of the Victor's territory that can reach into HYP. So it looks like the, uh, the Bastion are using either Y2- dash or CL- dash to reach and reach into these systems here. And uh, so just something to be aware of. Uh, and this will be interesting to see if Evictus can actually protect Fethibolis. I've mentioned this in the past, that I think Evictus have kind of stretched themselves quite thin as they've kind of moved into Esoteri Esoteria and are kind of busy there as well with the Army of Mango. And uh, so it'll be interesting to see if they can actually defend this properly. And from what we've seen already with this loss in HYPL-V, the jury's out on that one. So that's going to be something to look at. All right, so that brings us up to speed on Fethibolis. Now we're going to go to Catch. So uh, I mentioned last week that the initiative uh, where their structures are being reinforced and everything, uh, there was, um, let's see, the initiative have got had this, this one, and I think they had these three. Maybe it was these two. Let me just redraw that. I think it was this one and these two. Now, uh, all of these were actually reinforced last week, if you remember, and uh, I actually found out that it was one, one pilot, a brave pilot, in an Atron that went around all on his own and reinforced all of these. Now, uh, unfortunately, they, they were not, uh, th that advantage wasn't taken of, taken advantage of, uh, let me just rephrase my words, that was not correctly taken advantage of. As you can see, the soft return to in it. It wasn't actually, the soft warfare wasn't taken out. And Jakari's just used it as an opportunity to take the other system. Uh, but more importantly, uh, the initiative came back to me and said they had no intention of protecting any of their structures in U-Q or in OSHT. They, their, their modus operandi is to, operandum is to basically uh, just move uh, wherever they need to and they just leave the structures behind and if they get destroyed, they get destroyed. If not, then they're there for the allies to use. And so they were quite happy to leave these uncontested to die. And that is what has happened. A Fortizar and an Asbel were destroyed in a U-QVWD right there. That was a big squiggle. All right. Okay. So um, that's pretty much it for catch. And uh, we can move on again. And uh, before we move on to anything else, it's time for the giveaway. So once again, I am giving away these two lovely Procura Scope syndication skins. And uh, they do look absolutely gorgeous. And they proved very, very popular from last week's prize draw. By the way, as well, last week's prize draw is amazing to hear all of the different countries that everybody is from. It's just amazing that we've got such a global community at Frosty's OP and everybody's getting engaged from all parts of the world and from all sides of New Eden as well, which is absolutely epic. So you know the score by now. The way that you enter the prize draw is you have to make a sentence in the comments that involves a keyword or a particular thing. This week, I need you to use the word bubbles. As you will see later on the program, bubbles are very much the, the key theme this week. So sentence in the comments, that's YouTube comments with the word bubbles, and I will then do a prize draw random with the, for anyone with that using that sentence. And uh, it, you have a cutoff date, which is 1800 UTC on Friday, the 21st of May. Yep, that's right, 21st of May. 
All right, there we go. So good luck in the prize draw, and I look forward to giving those to you next week. All right, so now we're going to move on to esoteria. Uh, where's esoteria? There we go, down there. All right, so esoteria, uh, the main thing to notice is um, the uh, Army of Mango have kind of started pushing further into Bastion territory, and you can see that uh, we're getting basically systems reinforced around here. We're getting Ferrata systems as well that are getting reinforced here as well. Ferrata being part of the Imperium. And uh, also there was a jump gate that died in HT4K-M. That's an Ancelate jump gate. And if I remember correctly, it jumped to one of these systems down here. I can't remember which one, but it was one of these in this particular area. And uh, that was destroyed. Now, uh, if I remember rightly, uh, the thing to, to, that is of note here is that it's not just Army of Mango that is uh, basically getting involved in this. Uh, also, Pandemic Horde have shown up, Evictus, obviously Evictus being, uh, as you can see, having all this territory around here. My pen's gotten thicker again. Uh, we'll fix that in a minute. And, uh, and obviously Fire as well. So we've got basically uh, AOM, so Army of Mango, plus Pandemic Horde, plus Evictus, plus Fire Coalition, all coming in, uh, they are vastly outnumbering uh, uh, the Bastion and Ferrata and blobbing them. And so it is quite likely that um, unless uh, the Bastion re receives support from the Imperium, whether that be the Initiative or Goonswarm themselves or some other groups within the Imperium, they are most likely to be pushed out in Esoteria in the coming weeks, I would imagine. Once again, that's speculation, uh, but I'm just... Uh, just taking a punt there based on what I've seen so far. Okay, so um, is that everything? Yeah. Okay, I have a kill mail actually for the Fortisar, so you can just see that we've got Pandemic Horde, and if I scroll down, I can see lots of Pandemic Horde, then we've got Evictus, uh, then if we keep scrolling down, uh, there we go, we've got Legion of Death uh, showing up there, Razor, Razor Alliance, which is part of um, a Fire Coalition, and then we've got Evictus, and so forth and so on. So that just goes to confirm what I just said uh, earlier on. Okay, so uh, now we're gonna go to uh, um, Esoteria. <laughs> no, we've done Esoteria. There we go, we're going over to Aquarius. So the only reason we're doing Aquarius is very, very briefly, last week uh, I mentioned that a system right up here in the corner, A2-V27 was reinforced. I assumed it was some small gang activity trying to get a fight. That was uh, confirmed. It was Darkseid. Uh, Darkseid originally had some uh, territory here, some Sov in this area. They got pushed out by Brave into Losec, and they came in just to, uh, to harass a little bit. So, like I expected, no biggie, but I just wanted to complete that, so to finish off the story as to what was happening there. All right, so then what we're gonna do is we're gonna move over to Fountain. So, uh, in Fountain, uh, I mentioned uh, last week about United Fleet. And United Fleet were in this constellation up here. And I was surprised they hadn't been pushed out yet. And uh, the Fountain Book Club or FAPI or the Fountain Coalition, or whatever you want to call it, which are all of these alliances who are here, that's Celestial Empire, uh, Federation Uprising, Losek Naya Shalupan, uh, Stella Renesitu, uh, and so on and so forth. They're all banded together. They're all working together in Fountain. And they said the main reason why they were struggling was because of the time zone that... Um, um, United Fleet were in the Russian time zone, it didn't really work well with them, it may cause them a few struggles, but as you can see now, it happened a week later than I expected, but as was expected, United Fleet were pushed out of Fountain. So that's Fountain, and that brings us on to Delft, right. <laughs> so, with Delft, as you know uh, by now that everything is all about this constellation here, um, whose name I've forgotten again, I think it's O-E-I-M-K, excuse me. Yep, I got it right. O-E-I-M-K, there we go. Uh, and so let's go back to our hubs. So as I said, this constellation here is the main area of attack for the Pappy forces. This is where the Imperium have gone. We are going to consolidate here. We're going to turn this into a fortress, and this is where we're going to protect everything. And throughout the last three weeks now, I believe, uh, the last three weeks, this has been the system that Pappy have been trying to break into through 3-DMQT. And the way they've been doing this is they put in a jump bridge into ETAC V, E VKJV, and the Imperium have a jump bridge from 1DQ 1A, which is their staging, into 3 DQMT, DMQT. So um, the main thing that's been happening 
is that uh, the Imperium have really solidified their defense strategy. So uh, Papi have been dropping as belts and they've been doing this all week. And this week they dropped uh, another four died and there are still two more anchoring. Now the problem that uh, Papi are encountering is not in getting in the system, it's in getting out. And the way that this is now happening is that the Imperium uh, are able to uh, create uh, two full capital fleets and put them on structures into both gates. So that's the gates going from 3-D into E-V and also into the other gate which is into N-8. And so they put these carriers on and then these, uh, both of these gates are super bubble. Now let me give you an example. I've actually got some screen grabs here. So this is the gate in 3-D. So uh, I'm on a 4K monitor so uh, you can see the gate is actually just right there in the middle. So it could, gives you an idea of kind of the scale. Uh, we then have uh, a structure up here. I think there might be another one on grid, I can't remember. Uh, and so all the carriers go and sit on this structure up here. And anything that has to get through this gate has to kind of burn through the gate. Now obviously if they put on prop mods, then they become really easy targets for carriers, but also for bombers. And this is the time when I'm going to mention this. Uh, this was um, on Friday night. Uh, there was an attempt, this is Friday night US time zone, but it was very early hours of the morning uh, UTC, so it's around between midnight and 2 a.m. on Saturday morning UTC. A big fight broke out. Most of the fights had been happening in US time zone. Uh, Papi did appear to not be comfortable engaging in EU, that the numbers are too great against them. So they've been trying in US time zone all week. And this time a big fight broke out, but things went badly wrong on the extraction. And a, a initiative FC called Panda Arica, or Panda for short, did a bombing run. Now he's known for his bombing runs, and this bombing run was epic. Now I've got some footage here, uh, and this was, uh, John Hartley very kindly let me have use of this footage, uh, and his link to his video is in the description below if you want to watch the whole thing. But essentially, uh, Pando uh, succeeded in doing some waves of bombing runs that took out four fleets. Uh, I believe there was a, a test fleet, there was a brave fleet, uh, I've, I've, I haven't even got them all here, but there was there was Munins and Serbs and there was just a ton of them. And uh, in fact, I've got a battle report for you as well, which I will show you in a minute. But basically you could see all of these explosions are ships and capsules blowing up all at once. I mean, it was literally a bloodbath. And so uh, this is where the problem appears that the uh, way around these bombing runs would be to drip feed your ships down to the gate. So you don't ship warp everything en masse to the gate. But the problem with that is that you have all of these carriers on grid with all of their fighters on the gate and they are going to basically destroy any ship on this on its own trying to get to the gate or in small quantities. But if you go in in a big group, uh, then you are subject to being targeted by the bombers. And then also you have to get all through all of these bubbles. So if you put your prop mods on, then you, you bloom, which makes you a much bigger target to bombs and easier for the, the, uh, the fighters to destroy you. And if you don't bloom, you take so long to get to the gate, it gives the, the fighters all the time in the world to destroy you. Now this is the gate in uh, 3-D, uh, the, sorry, the 3-D, sorry, the ETAC V gate in 3-D. And then we have the N-8YT, I think it is, gate. Uh, on the other side. So not quite as many bubbles, but then obviously then that takes them into two more systems. So they have to go into N-8 and then go into 1DQ1A before getting back to T5Z if that's Pappy trying to extract. And so they're in a very, very difficult position now as to what they do next. Now let me just show you this battle report quickly. So you can see that this battle report only covered uh, two hours. Uh, so it started at 00 and 220. But you can see 192 billion is lost and the vast majority of that was lost to this one bomb run. So it was very, very effective. And so this brings us into the situation of what happens next. So um, essentially, um, Papi are kind of in a really difficult position now because uh, the Imperium have created a very, very strong defense. Uh, Asbel's anchoring is really not working. Um, the problem there is that simply once again, because of the time delay, because of the high ADMs, uh, whenever Pappy drop an Asbel, uh, it gives all the time in the world uh, because they have long, like six day time uh, drop time for their Asbels versus just a couple of days for 
the Imperium, they're able to put structures on grid and drop carriers on to provide support and plenty of subcaps uh, to, to be able to kill uh, these structures because they're able to maintain damage cap for as long as necessary uh, to kill the structures. So the structures are pretty much guaranteed to die. There is no way that they can actually save them unless those carriers are actually engaged on grid, which would mean bringing in carriers of their own or super caps. And obviously trying to bring supers or carriers through those bubbles is not going to happen. So this is a very, very difficult point now for Pappy as to where they go from here. Now, I know there's a lot of mullings going on, you know, a lot of thought is being put into where to go next. And uh, this is going to be interesting because otherwise it does look like Fortress Delft can be protected. So there you go. Let me know your comments. Uh, you know, don't be like mad propaganda, but let me hear your thoughts on this as to, you know, which way things could go. And, and I'm really, really interested to see how this is going to play out as this is a situation that we've never, ever seen before in EVE. And uh, all is at stake now because this is the, essentially the final stage. And uh, will it all fall apart for Pappy now at this stage? Or will they find a way to break through? Who knows? All right, last thing. I am going with Nile, that's Frosty's OP team. We are going to E Vegas. I just wanted to announce that. Uh, so we're going to go there and uh, we're going to film the event. I'm going to interview people and uh, try and provide you loads of feedback. For those of you that are not aware, uh, EVE Vegas is going to be a player run event, uh, not a CCP event this year. It's running from the 22nd to the 24th of October. It's going to take place in downtown Vegas. And uh, I will link the Discord server to the EVE Vegas uh, event uh, down below in the description. So uh, if you want to help out and help us get some funds to get over to Vegas, uh, there is a link in the description. Uh, if you're going to create a new account uh, for an alt or a sino ship or a spy or anything like that, please do the link in the description. Uh, that helps out the channel and uh, will help us pay for our airfare to Vegas from the UK. All right, that's all from me. Uh, as always, please like, subscribe, hit the bell icon for, um, for notifications, uh, talk in the comments for the prize draw and for stuff that we've discussed today. And don't forget to join me on my Discord. And uh, we talk a lot about the strategy there. Uh, both sides or all sides are, are involved in those discussions. They can be very interesting sometimes. So please join us for that. And uh, yeah, that's all from me. Until the next one. Bye.